Hello everyone, my name is Kayla. Uh, this week I'm going to be showing you how you can make recycled paper. So to make this, you're going to need a couple of things, but I think the most important two things that you're going to need is a blender and uh, some paper, obviously, but also either a splatter screen or a mold and decal. Um, now, if you don't know what a mold and decal is, you can just kind of make your own. Um, it's like a window screen attached to a little wooden frame, but I didn't have one of those handy, so I just went ahead and used a splatter screen that we have. Um, I think this is about eight inches. Um, obviously, when you do this, it's going to make the paper circular, but uh, I was just going to cut out the shape of the paper I was going to use anyway, so that didn't really bother me. But if you want something that will be square at the very end without you having to cut it, I'd suggest making your own little mold and decal. So you're going to need about four or five pieces of paper, uh, depending on how many pieces you want to make in the long run. So you're going to need about four or five different pieces of paper, uh, maybe more depending on uh, how many pa uh, pieces of paper you want to make in the long run. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and tear up about four and a half of them so you can just just scrap pieces of paper from schoolwork so you can go ahead and tear up whatever you've got. So it is important to note that the color of the paper that you make will depend on the color of the paper that you're using. Like if I had just used all of this white paper, it would probably just end up being another normal white piece of paper uh, with some flecks of black in it from all the ink. But I am using some green, as you can see, so the paper will be a little bit greener. Uh, if you want pink paper or yellow paper or whatever, you can just use some construction paper, uh, tear that up and put that in there with them as well. Okay, so now that I've torn up all of my pieces of paper, um, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and fill either the blender or the cup that you put them in with hot water. Uh, it doesn't have to be hot water, but I think it goes a lot smoother if you do end up using hot water. Uh, they might have to soak for about 15 to 20 minutes, but you just got to go ahead and fill it with some hot water. And once it's done soaking, uh, you want to put it in your blender and then you want to blend it up. Uh, you want to make sure that the pulp mixture that it makes is runny. Uh, especially if you're using thicker paper. Um, but if you, if you think it's too watery, it's probably not watery enough. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and do all of that all in one cut because, you know, it can be pretty loud to blend. So I will just go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that you've got all of the pulp blended up, um, what you're going to want to do is you want to put it in a container that's a bit bigger than the splatter screen or the mold and decal that you're going to be using. Like, for example, my splatter screen is, uh, I, I believe it's 8 inches in diameter. So I went ahead and put all of the pulp in a container that was 9 inches wide. Uh, it's probably not going to be full enough with just the pulp, so you're going to want to add some more water to it to make it watery. So I already went ahead and did that. And you might want a spoon to go with it as well. Okay, so once you've got that, you can just go ahead and take your splatter screen. You don't want to put it in flat like that because all you'll be doing is pushing the pulp out of the way. So you want to kind of slide it in like that. And then you're probably going to have to push it down a little bit like I am right here. And then what you can do is you can use a spoon to just sort of move the pulp over top of where the splatter screen is. And it might take you a little bit of time to do this right, because you want to make sure you get it even. Just like that. And once you've got that, you can just go ahead and let up and pull your splatter screen out of the water. And then once you're here, you can go ahead and transfer it to a towel. Now, once you're here, if you want to, you can always just let it sit there and, until it's done drying. But it goes a lot faster if you take another towel and put it over top and then blot it with um, a washcloth or another towel just to get rid of some of the extra water. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
Okay, so once you've done that, you can just go ahead and let it sit. All that's left is for it to dry. Depending on the paper that you use to make the pulp, it might take it a couple hours, or it could even take up to a day. Um, usually what I do is I just let it sit overnight. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and let it do, and it should be done by tomorrow. Um, if you want to uh, check and see if it's dry enough, you can push up some of the edges on the edge. Um, if it flakes off on the edge, you don't have to worry about that. You're probably going to end up cutting off the stuff on the edges anyway. So, but yep, that's that. It should be dry by tomorrow. Okay, so it's been about a day. Um, my mix is completely dry. You can kind of hear that it sounds more like paper. Um, so if you don't know if it's dry enough, a good way to test is to push up some of the stuff over on the edge right there. You can see that's what I was doing right there. And once you've got that, you'll just want to go ahead and gently press on the back to remove the paper from your splatter screen. Uh, don't push too hard though, because sometimes splatter screens can be a little fragile. So you want to make sure that you're only pushing hard enough to remove the paper from the splatter screen itself. And then you can go ahead and just take it off, but you want to make sure that you move the edges as you do it so nothing gets torn. Okay, and there you have it. Um, like I said at the beginning, it is circular if you're using a splatter screen. Um, you can always cut it to be the size that you need it to be. Um, but if you're using a mold and decal, usually it'll be square. But yeah, it's just like paper. And then you can go ahead and write on it however you'd like. Uh, it's usually a little bit flatter on the back where it was touching the splatter screen or your mold and decal. But either side is usually pretty good. But yeah, if you had put petals or grass in it or anything to decorate it, it would be in the paper right there. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit of speckles from the ink on the pages that I was using, but didn't put anything special in, this, in it this time. But that is going to be it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you can find some use for the paper. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you again this time next week. Bye-bye.